How's it going everyone? It's Mike here with ROF Airsmithing and today I have a really special marker to share. It is my 2006 Ego. This is the marker as the name of the video implies. This is where it all began for me. Um, so long story short, I'll probably do another video at some point with, um, you know, kind of my history overview of um, how I got into paintball and so forth and all the different markers that I used. But uh, essentially, I started in 2002 when I was 12 years old and I got into uh, paintball gradually moving up from uh, blowback style markers to eventually my first uh, electrum pneumatic, which was a smart parts ion and uh, got bit by the speedball bug and just started kind of moving up to mid-level markers up to high-end markers my first high-end was a dm4 blue to black fade which uh I, I don't have the exact one but i have one like it up on the wall um and just kind of uh worked through a couple different um, high-end markers um the dm i went to uh smart parts shocker and so forth and I remember that um, I had my DM4 and I had my Shocker SFT and my best friend, uh, still buddies with him to the day, we, we still play paintball and so forth, but he, um, he got a Proto Matrix Rail. This is when they first came out, I think it was 2007 or something. Um, it was still a pretty new marker. Uh, there was a lot of plastic parts on it, the feed neck collar was uh was plastic the back cap was plastic the trigger was plastic and first day out this marker uh the the feed neck collar broke on his marker uh, i think they had like a 12 or 10 inch one piece barrel um, they're pretty pretty basic so after that first day out when the plastic part broke he decided to do a total total overhaul of the marker he got um, they had, die had a kit for the PMR to replace all of the plastic parts with aluminum, metal. So it gave you a metal feed neck, it gave you a metal back cap, um, and a metal trigger. But he took it a step further, my buddy. He got also a 14 inch die UL barrel, 689 back, and uh, a die UL frame, and a virtue board. So he went totally nuts through the parts catalog at this PMR, um, as it was called, and um, I remember uh, we were in my basement, my parents' basement, we put the thing together, you know, we're 17 years old at the time, this was 2007, um, we, uh, we, we put the thing together, and um, yeah, it, it shot great, shot it in the backyard, shot, it was a really cool little marker, fairly cheap too. And, um, and so from there, my buddy goes on PB Nation and he saw a guy selling a 2006 Ego, red with black parts. I think it had a virtue board and CP trigger and so forth. And uh, my buddy reaches out to him and said, hey, you know, uh, just for the heck of it, I've got a PMR. And the guy said, if you add a hundred bucks, you got a deal. So my buddy, fully upped his PMR, didn't even, uh, we shot it in the backyard, but he never even took it to the field or anything. And then uh, he ended up trading it with a hundred bucks for an 06 Ego. And when he got that Ego in the mail, first thing we did is we, we took it out in my parents' backyard uh, and we, we shot it. We compared it I, he was shooting the ego six i was shooting my dm4 and we were comparing the two and um you know i kept saying oh you know the dm4 is more accurate the dm4 is less kick the dm4 is uh you know i was you know rooting for the dm4 because it was my marker but secretly i was jealous that ego was so much lighter so much faster it was just as accurate um just i mean it was probably wasn't as smooth as a uh, as a dm4 but it was just a heck of a marker and um so i set set out to uh to you know really buy one of those um 
by this point the 07 Ego had come out and they were fantastic. Shortly after he got his 06 Ego, the SL74 came out. And I remember going uh, to the local um, store with him and we, we held the SL74 for the first time and it felt like a toy. It was just so light and so sleek, uh, perfect ergonomics. And um, that just kind of gave me the ego bug even more. And so I um, started saving up. Um, I had been working uh, every summer. I worked for my dad's construction company 40 hours a week, um, starting when I was 14 years old. So, um, you know, that summer came around and I worked and saved and worked and saved and played lots of paintball. And, um, you know, uh, sold the DM4, sold the, uh, well, no, I didn't sell the Shocker, but um, I eventually purchased this. And I knew about this because in 2006, maybe it was early 2007, uh, a buddy of mine had a 2004 Pro Stock with uh, an E2 blade. Um, he had installed the E2 frame and everything on it. Uh, but he never, he didn't drill the body for eyes and he never even shot the marker. So um, essentially I put the pro stock back to stock. So I had a cool mechanical autococker and I had this practically brand new E2 frame in the case with the manual and everything like that. Um, but he also had his main marker was this. And so I knew that he, because I purchased the autococker from him, I knew that he was getting out of paintball and that, uh, you know, he, he was kept saying he was going to keep this around. So if he ever went back to the field or something, um, he had something. Uh, but as the year wore on, it became clear that he was not going to be playing paintball anytime soon. And so he reached out to me later in 2007. It was probably about August or something. And he... Um, you know, offered the marker to me to purchase it. I did for, I think, 750 bucks, which wasn't terrible at the time for a one-year-old ego. And I still have it to this day. So um, I was planning on, I, it's gone through many updates over the years. I used it throughout college. Um, right away, I took the factory 06 ego regulator off of it and i put a cp reg on it so still have it in that configuration um i had a um a cp trigger on it i had a new designs trigger on it and ultimately had a violent trigger on it i've used cure one bolts in it i've used nexus bolts in it i've used cure two bolts cure three bolts um virtue boards i had custom stinger grips made for it um I used to run a hybrid quarter turn ASA because it would have the the uh, macro fitting right out the front. Um, I've used Eclipse TI rammers. I've used the uh, the Function titanium rammers. I've used the um, uh, the Violent rammers system. Uh, so you know I, I really use this gun a lot. I don't know if you can see in there with the light, but you know there's no. Uh, there's no anodizing in the breech there. Um, this marker of all of my egos has probably won me the most points. Um, but, I, you know, I absolutely loved it and kept it all these years later, my, my very first ego. So this is a real special one. Um, if I had to sell everything, this, is, this one would probably be the last to go. And because, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to get a whole lot of money for it, I probably wouldn't let it go at all. So, um yeah, this is uh this is a special one. I was planning oh I did I did have a red star frame still have it actually a red star frame uh that I put on it to use uh while I was in college. And um I recently had that star frame or not that star frame, but I had a star frame T slot milled and I had grand plans to totally update this or the T slot milled star frame and a virtue board and i got a uh, the violent rammer for it and all kinds of things i was gonna do to it and i said you know what i just um not that i can't do that to my first ego because it's not like i would be ruining it ruining it in any way but um 
I just said, you know, wouldn't it be so cool to have back on the shelf my ego exactly as I had it back in the day? And uh, so that's what I did. Um, I the um, I got to mess around with this uh, factory rail here. Um, it's not accepting uh, an ASA too well. And this, is, of course, is the wrong color ASA anyway. I have a black one for it. But um, the goal is to put it all back to stock except for the Cure one, which was, uh, as I used it, um, my hybrid grips. These are the original grips that I used to use on it. The uh, my original virtue board that I had in it is back in the frame, and then my uh, CP reg, you know, with all the jewels missing, um, is back on it. So um, I'm excited to have my first ego back as it was, and yeah, I mean, am I gonna? Sh so I have another. I guess uh, because I still want to do those twin O five O six red and black egos. Um, I have another black 06 body that I'm going to be using. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I it, it's going to, I'm still going to do the hot rod 06 Ego, but I'm going to have this one as well. So this one, in all reality, probably isn't going to get shot that much once I have the uh, 05 and 06 twins done. But nonetheless... I'm really, really excited to have my first Ego complete. Um, well, it's not complete yet. I still have to go through the whole thing, do a full rebuild and uh, tune it up. But I'm excited to have it back as it was back in the day. So thanks for watching. Um, thanks for listening to my story of how I, you know, worked hard and saved up and bought my first Ego. And... You know, I'm, I'm happy to say and fortunate, I guess you to say that um, that I still have it all these years later. Never got rid of it. Never have uh, uh, never have to say, you know, I regret selling my first ego because here she is. Just get one good look again for the camera. All right. Once it's back together. And I'm not promising uh when that's going to be well, once it's back together i will do uh you know a shooting video maybe get it out at the field so thanks for watching um comment let me know uh what was your first ego do you still have it super interested to to know uh, i always think it's cool when people have something that's super sentimental to them that they that they uh you know keep and never end up getting rid of so you know what was your first ego do you still have it Comment, like, subscribe, let me know what other type of ego and, and Planet Eclipse videos you want to see. Thanks for watching.